host, Lele Pons, and I want to welcome you guys to a brand new episode of Best Kept Secrets. I hope you guys are having a lovely week. I have to tell you, I've been really looking forward to recording this show today because I've had a kind of weird few days. And I know that everyone who has been participating in this podcast has been super open and vulnerable with me. So I think it's only fair that I'm going to be completely honest with you. The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material, and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. Lele Pons is not a trained expert, but is using her personal experiences and platform to create a space for sensitive discussions. You know those days that you feel like everything is going wrong and you feel overwhelmed with life and kind of sad and kind of grumpy and you don't even know why and... It's just just the way that you just feel. It's just sadness. It's depression. I mean, you don't even know where it's coming from, but it's, it starts to hurt your stomach. And for most people, you eat more. And for most people, you don't you, you can't even eat. For me, in my case, I can't eat. I haven't eaten these past two days because I'm, I just there's something. It's just like I haven't been myself these past two days. It's you know, that was literally me yesterday. I don't know what caused it because nothing bad happened. And I've actually been feeling really great lately, which is kind of made it worse you know when everything's so good and you're just afraid that it's gonna go bad so you're just sad it doesn't doesn't make sense but it's like you don't want and it's going too well that you're like okay what's the catch okay something's gonna happen this does not last forever so it's like a high when you go really really high you you go to a low low so that was me but anyways, I was in bed yesterday under the covers watching Grey's Anatomy, trying to self-soothe and calm myself down when my mom walks in and, you know, she makes me feel better. She makes me like this hot cocoa that she makes. She makes me like little pasta tortellini soup and starts humming this like Spanish lullaby, pa- Palomita Blanca from like Venezuela. And uh, it, it brings me back to childhood memories. She likes to do cocolinis, which means it's like a, another word for cuddling and makes me feel better. So we all have a form of comfort and my mom is definitely uh someone that helps me with that and she comforts me a lot makes me feel a lot better we all form comforting attachments to people objects you know songs and smells at a young age and that's what we're going to be talking about on the show today both our callers can identify and relate to this Later on, I'm going to be talking to Jules, who hasn't been able to break a comforting eating habit she developed when she was a little girl. But before that, let's talk to Cindy, who has turned a fond memory of her childhood into an unusual collection. So let's give her a call. Hi, Cindy. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm dying to know. What is your best kept secret? My best kept secret. It's so embarrassing. I collect doll legs. Doll legs. Yes. Okay. But just the left one is kind of a, an obsession. So embarrassing. It's okay. What made you start collecting them? I mean, you know, I, I was thinking about this. And, and when I was young, I was really shy. And I know um, I would hold on to my mom's leg. And I guess it was her left leg. And I would hide behind her skirt. Oh, so it's like um, a sentimental thing. Yes, yeah, so I, I guess you could say that. And then it changed from there. So it is what it is, I guess. Amazing. Though I like that. I, I, I used to collect dolls, not the legs, but I used to collect dolls. What kind of dolls are them? Barbie dolls are the best, but, but I do whatever I can find. I mean, sometimes it's hard getting that left leg. So um, Cabbage Patch, um, Brat dolls. Ooh, Brat dolls. I have a lot of them. When, when did you start doing that? I think I started young. I mean, I guess it was with my own dolls. Um, I think my mom must have noticed that most of my dolls were missing their left legs, but I don't remember her ever saying anything. Yeah. And then from there, I would take my friend's dolls. I guess I wasn't very popular (laughs) with my friends when I was little. Me neither. I wasn't. I was always playing dolls and just in my house and, and in my little world. It's okay. I'm glad you understand. Dolls are lovely. It's like mini us and we can control them. So <laughs> I like that. That is a good point. And what did your parents say about, you know, the legs and pulling up the legs off? I hid them pretty well. I used to um, like hide them in a box under my bed. So my mom would never look under there. And my collection's quite big now. So. <laughs> I have 300 dolls. To be oh, honest. my. That's amazing. That is amazing. But I'm sure yours have both of their legs. I do have both of our legs, both men and women. 
<laughs> what do you do with the rest of the dolls after you take the leg off? Um, I usually just leave them. I mean, it's bad when I do it in the store. Um, I just kind of hide the box behind the other boxes. And, it, you know, at flea markets, I'll just put them under the pile if there's a pile of dolls there. I hide my uh, habit pretty well, I think. That's kind of funny. I don't I like I don't think anybody has done that to like the Barbies, but like definitely collections are collections and I've heard many weird ones. Like like cat whiskers collections and stuff, you know? So Interesting. Those yeah. would be hard. They're so tiny. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's there's a lot. And and you just take the leg and leave the rest of the dolls, right? I do. It's just that left leg. It's I know it sounds crazy, but uh it gives me comfort, I think. Do you do you buy the dolls or do you steal them? Sometimes I steal them. It depends. Sometimes I'll buy them and and I'll bring them home and I'll take the left leg and I'll rebox them really carefully and take them back. Do you, do you feel guilty or you're just like, no? No. <laughs> when it becomes an obsession. I know it does become an obsession and, and a collection is a collection yeah. and you like it. It's what fills you at the end. Has anyone ever caught you, you know, taking a leg? You know, I almost got caught. I came really close. I was in... Um, like a thrift store and there was an older man um, that was working like the register and, and he saw me, but I just kind of started playing with the legs and, and like walking them around. And I think he just thought I was strange. So he left me alone. Do you like legs like in general people's legs? No, not at all. It's just those dolls. I think you're right. It's like that. It might be control. You can control dolls, and I guess I can yeah. control having as many left legs as I can. And how many do you think you have? Maybe 400, 500. Do you play with them? Or- I do. I shake the boxes around, and it's kind of fun. And I'm, I'm actually thinking about maybe making art or maybe jewelry. I like that. I like that. And does anybody else know about your collection? They don't. Not even your parents? No, no. Oh, wow. Not at all. And if she did, maybe she's forgotten. Yeah. Oh. Do you have any other unusual collections? You know, this is probably a bad one, but traffic cones. Why the traffic cones? Orange is my favorite color. Um, and it's kind of the shape of, of, of a leg. And you can make it a table leg if you turn them upside down. And actually, I've started storing my legs that won't fit in my clear boxes. Um, they make good storage containers to hide those as well. I mean, how much space do you have to collect those, though? They're huge. They are big. I don't have as many. That I just started doing probably within the last year. Okay. Um, and I see them on the street or, you know, when... I don't like being told what to do. And if you want to park your car and there's a cone there, it's oh, perfect wow. to take that. So this cone. has a double meaning. Right. Right. Yep. So, cause sometimes they use them to mark parking spaces. So you don't park there, but I park there anyway. Do you, do you get a lot of parking tickets? Not too many. Not, not too, many. too many. No, not too many. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you so much for talking to us today and sharing the the the, the cones was was a uh, was an extra one. Thank you for telling us that one as well. So nice to be able to share a secret with somebody. Thank you so much. Oh, anytime. You know, it's good to open up, and there's no judging here, so everything goes. Oh, that's so nice to know. Thank you so much, and continue. Maybe not stealing, but definitely continue. No, I will. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, I think I've saved up enough money now that I can I can buy special ones. Have an amazing day. Thank you. You too. Listen, we all collect weird things, you know, and for her, it's Barbie legs or doll legs. And that's completely normal. Sometimes when you collect things that you don't even know why you like them. And like, to be honest, I used to collect like rocks when I was little. A lot of people collect rocks different types of rocks and you, it's rocks you know and you don't even know why but you do because it, it fills you up you make it makes you happy and i understand and the cones that's that's intense you i wonder how you can collect so many because they're they're big they're not like little things like legs i can understand rocks and whiskers and stuff like that i can understand but that's a tough one you know maybe she should get like little ones or like pictures of them <laughs> not the real ones and uh she definitely shouldn't steal them that's for sure i think her looking back of why she started the collection about like her mom liked that gives it sentimental value that gives me that gives it like some personal things and like it reminds her of like her mom and it makes her happy so it's good to have like a purpose 
All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. But before I do so, I just want to say if you have any weird habits or, or collections that you would like to talk about and don't feel comfortable with anybody else talking about it, come to the show at shots.com slash secrets. And we're back, guys. Let's jump right in with Jules. Hi, Jewel. Hi. So, Jewel, what is your best kept secret? Well, I live alone and um, I eat out of a dog bowl sometimes. All right. What? Why do you do that? Is there a specific reason? Oh, yeah. Um, basically, I um, grew up as an only child. It, it really starts during that time where, like, my parents spent a lot of time outside of the house. Um, and so, basically... I was only with my dogs all the time. Um, so they were like my companions. Um, I really felt like I was part of their little pack. Um, and so um, they kept me company while my parents were out. Now with like the, with living alone, I remember that one of the best times was when um, my parents kind of allowed me to eat out of a dog bowl. <laughs> and um and so that basically started because I just like, I really wanted to just eat with them, like everything we did together. So, um, yeah, like I started eating some, some meals and basically out of that, I felt like that was some of the best times that I had. Um, and now that I'm living alone, it just feels, um, a little bit more like a safety for me. Yeah. So it was like a comfortable and, and secure. And I feel like, you know, whatever happens the first years of your life uh, really do affect the rest of your life. Um, that's something I do believe. I think, uh, how old were you when this happened? Were you young? Yeah, I was pretty young. Um, I think this started around when I was like six, yeah. seven. Yeah. yeah. And uh, is that the only thing that you do like with like that has to do with like the dogs? Do you like sleep in the like, you know, sleep in the floor? Do you pee outside? I mean, it depends. Like what what else is or is it just that? <laughs> It's mostly just eating out of the dog bowl. I do sometimes just like lay around with them, though. It's okay. always really fun. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think I do that, too. And um, how long have you been like living alone? It's only been a couple months. OK, so I'm pretty new to it. Yeah, because um, I was still living with my parents. Um, but now I came out alone with uh, one of my dogs. <laughs> OK. And do you eat in the dog bowl, like in the table? Do you sit at the table and you eat? there or you eat at in the floor i actually put it on the floor so um i kind of just like eat with the dog and watching tv and, and just like that basically like anytime like he's eating so um sometimes it might be like if we're watching tv together um but other times it's just like us enjoying our meal what do your parents say like what are the what are their response how long did it take for them to be okay with it they only think i've done it when i was little so um, they don't know that I've kept it up. What did your first dog bowl look like? Were, were you able to pick pick out the one that you wanted? You clean it first, right? Like you, you, eat, you eat other things. You don't eat dog food. Like you actually eat your stuff. Oh, yeah. I eat like soup and just regular food. Yeah. But um, I think the first dog bowl was maybe just one of the ones that the dogs had. And I just like washed it. But now I have my own dog bowl. And it's just for me. And then my dog has his own. So pretty sanitary. <laughs> do you eat every meal out of the bowl? Almost every meal. It depends because I only do it at home. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it anywhere else that I've, you know, like seen. Um, like if I'm eating lunch at work or something. But at home, yeah, pretty much every meal. You haven't told anybody about this? Or have you eaten out of the bowl in front of someone? No, I have never told anyone. I usually just keep it in my closet. And if someone asks about it, I'm like, I just have an extra dog bowl. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I try to keep it out of the way. Yeah. What, what do you think your friends would say if you told them? I think they think I'm a little bit crazy and not understanding that it's something that just brings me a bunch of comfort. Yeah. So I don't think they'd be very approving. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, you know what? Because they don't understand. They they haven't gone through what you've gone through and they don't get it. It's like it's things that you can't even explain, to be honest, like things that make you happy. Like I have my stuff, you know, that since little I can't explain, but I've, I've grown up doing that, that it's are weird now. And um, and everyone self-soothes in different ways. So even though yours is different and unique, I 
it doesn't doesn't mean it's wrong, you know? Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So don't worry about it. Your secret's safe with me and it's okay. <laughs> you there's a lot of really bad secrets. This is this is harmless. So <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so have have an amazing day. Thank you for coming here and talking about it. I hope it helped. Yeah, it did. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have an amazing day. You too. Bye. You know, I think the first six years of your life will define weird things that you do in the future. They're very important. Like, like for example, I'm scared of needles. Why? My mom's a doctor. She used to put needles on me and I would never, I didn't like that. And like her hand was a little hard and blah, blah, blah. blah. What happened? Like, you know, so... It's very important uh, for even for parents to know that the first years of your child are very important. So I think, um, well, they don't know that she still does it. it. Definitely makes her comfortable, and that's okay. That's amazing. And you know, with even with Toby, with my dog, I like to like do stuff with it. He eats. He eats with me. <laughs> you know, but I, but he eats in the table. It's weird, but he eats in the table, and uh, he sleeps with me, and he goes everywhere with me. He does everything with me. Now, I, the only thing I don't eat in the same bowl, but. We eat together. So, you know, it's just a bowl. As long as it doesn't take over her life, it's okay. You know, she does it when she wants to do it and she doesn't do it when she knows it's not appropriate to do it. All right, then. Well, that was very interesting calls. In fact, I mean, they both were very interesting. So I want to thank Cindy and Jules for taking the time to call in and share their secrets today. Thank you so much. That was amazing. And I'm going to be honest, if somebody told me before that there, I was going to be talking to people that collect dolls and eat in, in their dog bowls, I would have probably thought that was a little strange. But as I said before, no judging and try to understand the person. That's the whole point of this show. So I'm happy I was able to talk to Cindy and Jules and understand more where things come from, you know. And I think both of their secrets were kind of sweet and come from a good place. The thing that links Cindy's treasured collection of doll legs and Jules' desire to eat of a dog bowl is the comfort that doing these things give them. I know myself that life can be so hard and it can easily wear you down, but anything you can do to make it easier on yourself is okay by me. And I I know I have many of that, like some foods, like people. For me, it's more people and food that do that for me. These girls might have unusual ways of dealing with life, but they're not hurting themselves or anyone else by living their lives in this way. So I say whatever works, works and continue doing it if it helps. Talking to Cindy and Joel really got me wondering about what do people do to calm themselves? So I texted a couple of my girlfriends to see how common this is. Uh, One of my friends told me that when she was little, her grandmother used to hold her on her knee. And while she was there, she'd rub her grandma's earlobe. It would make her feel safe and secure. Now she's grown up and she does the same thing to her boyfriend. She said that it doesn't really understand why she does that, but he let her doing it because he knows that it calms her down and it gets rid of her stress. So that's a good boyfriend. It seems like these sort of comforting habits are pretty widespread. So that's why I'm going to throw this over to you right now. My question of the week is, do you have a security blanket? It doesn't have to be an actual blanket, just anything that we talked about today that calms you down. That's what I want to hear about. Head over to my Instagram at Lilipons to vote in the poll. That's our show for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope we've brought you some comfort and calm this week. And you'll join me again back here next Wednesday for some more best kept secrets. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741-741 for a confidential chat anytime. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinot, Liz Gailey, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebodge. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week.